Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a little bit of a Sephora savings event haul as well as some Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and some other little odds and ends that I've picked up along the way. And it is going to be quite a long video. I debated over whether I should put this in a part one and part two and I just decided, you know what, we're just gonna make it one real big long video because personally, I really like long videos. I'm the type of person who likes to throw something on while I clean the house or while I'm falling asleep at night or whatever and honestly, I get annoyed when a video is too short so if you guys don't like long videos I do apologize but if you're in the mood to drink coffee and hear my thoughts on some of these awesome things that I found then stay tuned. I hope everybody is doing really well. I hope everyone's having a lovely December. I know here where I live we have really warm weather like oddly warm weather. There's no snow on the ground. It feels like fall. I'm not complaining but at the same time it's really strange. I don't even have my Christmas tree up yet. Anyways get yourselves a cup of coffee and make yourself cozy and if you're new here welcome. My name is Alithia and on this channel I do share a lot about self-care. I talk about perfume. I talk about organization. I share some of my favorite finds like makeup, fashion, and I love coffee and I love just hanging out and having this like positive space to share with you guys and yeah, just sharing things that I love. So if that sounds like something that might be up your alley, then I would love if you would consider subscribing and without further ado, you guys, let's jump on into today's video. All right, so in no particular order, we'll start out with the Gold Bond Age Renew Retinol Overnight Face and Body Lotion. So this I got because I've been using this product now for probably at least six months, I would say, and I'm going through my second bottle of it as we speak, um, but I only got like the small squeezy tube from Amazon, and because I use it so often and I've been going through it so quickly, I decided to get this large... Um, pump bottle because I figured it would be more economical. You can find this on Amazon in the States. I don't know why, but I can't find it on Amazon in Canada. Um, Amazon Canada really needs to get their act together because it's so hard to find certain products. And then on amazon.com, you can find like everything. But anyways, I do order from amazon.com quite frequently if I can't find the product I'm looking for. And that's where I found this. So this is basically a retinol cream for your body. We put retinoids on our faces, whether you're using a retinol or whether you're using a prescription strength. I think a lot of people these days are aware that retinol is kind of, or retinoids are kind of the gold standard when it comes to anti-aging. And so for putting it on our faces and our necks and our decollete, why not put it all over our whole bodies? Um, so this is something that has just become part of my regular routine. I would say I put this on like every probably second or third night. I haven't been super consistent. I think just because I had such a small tube and I didn't want to run out, but now that I've got this large one, this will probably just eventually take the place of my normal like Jergens body lotion because why not apply something with retinol in it every time I'm putting lotion on my body? And I really, really enjoy it. I don't have any kind of irritation. Um, it really softens your skin. It moisturizes the skin and I really, really like it. So that is the first thing that I got. The second product that I got is the Olaplex number no. seven bonding oil. So I had actually asked you guys on Instagram, what were the best oils that you could recommend for fine hair? Um, something that wouldn't weigh my hair down or make it feel greasy because as I told you guys in one of my more recent videos, I'm running out of my Playa Ritual um, hair oil that apparently somebody mentioned was owned by Morphe. And I guess Morphe is like, I don't know, going into business or something. I'm not hundred percent sure. I don't really keep up with that stuff. But anyway, so that's why I can't find the Playa hair oil. And overwhelmingly on Instagram, a majority of people recommended this oil. There was also some other really good recommendations, but this one just got hit after hit after hit. So I was like, okay, you know what? It was on sale. And I decided to get a little bottle of this. Hair oils do tend to last me a really long time. So the Olaplex hair oil claims that it reduces frizz and flyaways, extends color and renews vibrancy, which I don't cover my whole head of hair, so that's fine. Heat protection up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, shortens drying time, softens and detangles, no residue, color safe, vegan and alcohol free. Um, so it is a bonding oil that's supposed to repair, quote unquote, repair all hair types. So yeah, I haven't used it yet and I'm really excited. I'll let you guys know how it goes. The next couple of items I got are just a couple of little complexion products. So this is actually the Morphe blending sponge and also the Beauty Blender um, double-sided poof, I guess, or puff or powder puff. I don't know what you call these things. I have used both of them, so I apologize if they kind of look gross, but I actually really like both of them. And when I first got the Beauty Blender one, this one here, I kind of thought initially it was like impulsive and I thought I'm probably going to end up just not even opening it. I'm probably just going to return it because you can get little like triangles from Amazon for super, super cheap. But this had so many good reviews and 
it just felt so squishy and so nice in the package. And so I decided to open it. And once I tried it, I really actually liked it. So I do quite like this. I like that it's soft and squishy and that it has a pointed tip. So you can really get up like under the eye area. Um, so to be honest, you guys, I do prefer a brush for my finishing powder, but this is quite a nice little, little puff. I'm just going to have to remember to clean it frequently. And then the Morphe sponge, this is actually such a nice sponge. I don't know what the deal is with Morphe. I'm kind of sad that they're going like, I don't know. I think they're going out of business. Don't quote me, but yeah, cause they used to have some really cute like eyeshadow palettes that you can't get anymore. And I know I have friends that use Morphe products and love them, but this is like a super good little squishy little sponge. And I kind of like the way it feels <laughs> and it does a nice job of applying my, um, foundations and concealers. And I have to be honest, I think a sponge is my favorite way to apply most of my complexion products. So I'm always looking for like a nice feeling sponge and this one's pretty good. The next product is an eyeshadow and you guys know if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, eyeshadow has not been my repertoire, my area of expertise. I rarely, rarely wear a full like dolled up, glammed out face, eyeshadow and everything. My go-to for days off when I'm just going to the gym is literally like maybe concealer, mascara and sunscreen. And then on days when I want to feel a little bit more put together, it's still like pretty simple, but I usually don't toy around with a lot of eyeshadow. I just like, I don't know. I don't feel like it's really necessary for the most part, but I wanted to try this by Gwen Stefani. I think you pronounce it give by Gwen Stefani. I'm not hundred percent sure. And this is the I see in color palette in the colors or in the color simple kind of life. So the colors that it has are faithful to freedom. I was in love, obsessed and covered in shells. I'll show you what it looks like. So these are the colors you guys. And honestly, I'm like a beginner when it comes to eyeshadow, like eye makeup. I am not an expert by any means. It has to be really easy for me to use. Um, it has to be like no nonsense and foolproof. These colors are so beautiful. This palette was pretty inexpensive. I don't know. I've been seeing that these colors at Sephora for a long time. I always walked past them. I never tried them. And honestly, this is the type of palette that I could replace all my other palettes with. It's that easy and it's that good and it's that versatile. I do tend to prefer the cooler tones. I don't like the kind of orangey brown one in the top right hand corner, just because I feel like sometimes those warmer colors don't flatter my face as much, but I really like the neutral shades and I particularly like that sort of light pink up in the right hand corner. So I really, really love the colors. Um, they're very easy to apply. They have a really beautiful matte, kind of a silky application, not a ton of fallout. Again, I'm not a beauty expert. I'm not a makeup expert, but I think that these are pretty good quality and for the price. Um, and you can just do so many looks with it. You can really smoke it out if you want to wear it for evening, or you can just go very simple with like the two lightest colors for an everyday kind of look. And yeah, super, super pretty. And the other thing I like about the other thing I like about this palette is that it is small enough that you can easily pack it on vacation. That's one thing that I found really annoying with a lot of palettes I have liked, like the Naked 3 palette from Urban Decay. I really like that one. And I also really like the Tarte Lit in Bloom palette, but they're so big and they're so heavy. I find them like cumbersome. Like I don't want to bring them with me on vacation because what if they break? And they're also just take up a lot of room in, in your bag. This is so small. You can just like throw it in your travel bag and take it with you. And I'm just like really thoroughly impressed with it. The next item that I grabbed was an hourglass finishing powder. You guys know that hourglass has been my favorite finishing powder for a long time. There's, and again, I'm not a beauty expert, I'm not a makeup expert, but there's something about this powder. And I know that I've seen other people say the same thing. It is just absolutely flawless. It is so beautiful. It just makes your skin look airbrushed. It takes away any imperfections. It blurs and blends things. It just is so perfect. So the only difference is the other finishing powder I have is the second lightest shade. And I didn't realize that when I first tried this finishing powder, I didn't know that I would love it so much. I just kind of got it on a whim. It wasn't, and I was so new to a lot of makeup at that time. I didn't really know what shade to get. Didn't think I was going to end up loving it as much as I did. So I ended up, ended up getting the second lightest shade. This one is the actual lightest shade, which is actually better for me than the other one. Both of them are good. I can use them interchangeably and I will, but I wanted to try the lightest one. And this is in the color ethereal light. So it's the ambient lighting powder in the color or in the shade ethereal light. And yeah, such a gorgeous powder. You guys like this one and the other, I've already used this one actually a few times. I don't know if you can tell, but I've already, already used this one a few times. And 
I think it's gonna take forever for me to hit pan on these. I've tried other finishing powders even since starting these ones, like beautiful ones, and this still remains my favorite finishing powder, so I thought it doesn't hurt to have both. Um, I can do both shades, both of them work great for me. Next I have a couple of bronzers to share with you guys. Now I have been using the Charlotte Tilbury, what is it called, the highlighter and bronzer duo. I've been using that one for like months now and I really, really like it. But I've been intrigued by the Makeup by Mario products and when the Sephora um, VIB sale or whatever savings event sale was on, I just wanted to check out some Makeup by Mario because this company has been getting a ton of hype. So I ended up getting this product and this is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector and this is in the shade Light. So this is a radiant radiant skin powder and I tried this and I also tried the skin enhancer. The skin enhancer is like a balmy sort of a dewy cream product that is absolutely stunning, really really nice. But and I actually expected that I would like the enhancer better than the perfector. This one's the perfector. I ended up liking this one a lot more than the enhancer. I think I'm just kind of too new to cream products. I don't have as much experience working with cream products and I still tend to kind of prefer a powder over a cream for the most part. And what I like about this is it has kind of a gradient. So on the very top, you have this kind of pearlescent like illuminator, a little bit of a highlighter. And then the middle strip there is more of this warm kind of coppery, sunny, like truly sun-kissed color and it's a little bit shimmery and then the one on the bottom is more of a matte um, cool tone so some people I've seen try to use the colors independently what I think works best is when you just take your brush and you swirl all three of them together I think that's how it's meant to be used that's how I saw Mario using it in the videos and tap off your brush and just go lightly over your hairline and the places where you would want kind of that bronzed, sun-kissed glow. So for me, I kind of like a bronzer that I can use as a bronzer and a contour. I don't like to be fussy. I don't like to have multiple products. That's what I like about the Charlotte Tilbury. I can bronze and I can contour with it because it's cool enough toned that I can also get away with it for like contouring my nose. So I tend to like more matte products. This is not matte. This is very radiant, a little bit of a shimmer to it. Um, definitely makes you look glowy, but you guys, this actually just <laughs> makes your skin look so, so beautiful. So I wasn't sure if I was going to keep this because it was almost a little too radiant for me, but man, when I have this on and I go back and look in the mirror, I'm just like, I can't believe how beautiful the glow is. Like, I can't believe how pretty the glow is. Um, so yeah, this ended up staying, and I think this is one I would wear more, again, during the summer or on a day when I just wanted a little bit more radiance. And the next bronzer, you guys, <laughs> this was a splurge. This is the Dior bronzer. I think it is called the Dior Forever Natural Bronzer. It's in the shade 410 Bronze, which I believe is the lightest, the lightest um, shade that they have. First of all, the packaging is amazing. It actually has um, like a like a faux leather, a faux leather package to it. It is so so pretty, just absolutely stunning, stunning packaging. And when you're purchasing Dior, I do think that you're paying a little bit for the packaging. You're not just getting the product; you're getting the packaging. But you guys, not a word of a lie. This is, again, coming from a consumer, coming from a newbie when it comes to makeup, coming from someone who is not like particularly skilled or <laughs> anything, this is probably the nicest bronzer, the nicest bronzer, the best bronzer I have ever, ever, ever used. And I did test out a couple during the savings event. I tested out one from Huda Beauty. And like I said, I tested out that Mario Enhancer and the Skin Perfector from Makeup by Mario. And like I said, I've got the Charlotte Tilbury and I've tried a few other bronzers in my past. This is definitely my favorite formula, my favorite shade, my favorite color, my favorite build buildability. Um, it's not too dark, it's not too heavy, it has a great buildability to it, which I actually notice across the board with Dior products. I feel like their blushes and their bronzers, you can kind of go light with them if you need to go light, but if you wanna build it up to something stronger, you can also do that. So it's just so pretty. This color as well, you guys, is like the perfect cool, like cool neutral matte color. 
it just looks flawless on the skin. It is so beautiful. It's easy to work with, especially for somebody like me who isn't used to a ton of makeup products. You're kind of a baby. You don't want to put too much on and then think, oh shoot, this isn't going to work because I just applied way too much. Like it's impossible to apply too much of this. You can go in again and again and you can build it up to whatever intensity you want. And the shade is just stunning. Like this was an absolute love from first try on. So yeah, it was kind of a splurge. And when I had a few bronzers in my cart, I was going through and I was eliminating them, deleting from my cart. And I just wanted to try this because I like a lot of Dior products. And also you guys, I'm not gonna lie, I wanted the packaging. Like I wanted to just see is the product as good as the package and it is. So it was pricey, but the way I can kind of justify it is A, I love it so much I'm going to use it and B, it takes a long time to go through bronzer. So this was one of my favorite, like this is probably one of my best makeup purchases from the entire sale. And if you've been tempted to try this, definitely give it a go. It's flawless, it's beautiful, it's easy to work with. It's such a pretty shade. So again, this is in the shade 04 tan bronze, which is really good for a pale, like a fair to light skin tone. All right. Another application product. This is the makeup by Mario F1 brush. I got this because, um, I've kind of been getting into trying different types of brushes and stuff. I didn't have a very big brush collection. And I think that some of the brushes I had weren't necessarily the greatest for applying certain products. Like I was probably using the wrong brush for my bronzer. I was probably using the wrong brush for my blush and really the tools that you're using. I'm learning make a big difference in how your final look comes out. If you're using a brush that applies too much blush, like it just holds on to too much blush, you're gonna end up with like clown cheeks and you're gonna think, oh my gosh, this does not work for me, this is too bright, this is whatever, and especially if you're new like me, um, you need to know how to properly apply things. And I'm kind of learning that, like, I'm learning that less is more. Anyway, I saw Makeup by, or I saw Mario using this brush to apply his skin perfecter on one of the models. And I just really liked the way that it worked and it looked like it was a great brush to pair with bronzers. So I got it and I really like it. It's a really nice brush to apply the skin perfecter, but also other bronzers that I have, which is quite nice. And then this other side has a smaller, um, tapered end on it. And this is really good for contouring the nose. So I really like that there's like an option. You can use the one end for like larger parts of your face and you can use the smaller end for contouring. So really like a nice two in one kind of product. All right. I have a couple blushes to share with you. So this one is by Armani beauty and this is the, where does it say it? It's hard to read the luminous silk glow blush in the shade 10, which I can't remember the name of this blush. I'm going to have to look on my Sephora to see what it is, but this is the color of the blush. You guys, it is just a beautiful, this is like the lightest, like rose pink. If you're looking on the Sephora website, this is the lightest shade, like the lightest rose pink. Anyway, it is an apps. If I can, I'll find it when I'm editing and put it on the screen. This is just one of the most beautiful, like fairly matte, but silky finish blushes that I've ever used. It's so pretty. Again, it's pretty buildable. It kind of gives you like this barely there pink, like subtle, soft, neutral pink kiss. It's nothing too strong. It's not an overpowering color. It's not an overpowering formula. Again, you can go light with it or you can build it up. I really, really like it. Very, very pretty. I wanted, I wanted something that was just like a barely there subtle hint of pink because I find it, especially with me, because I already have a lot of natural like redness in my skin. I have kind of dry, sensitive skin. So it can sometimes look like I just someone slapped me <laughs> if I'm not careful with my blushes. So I have to be careful with how much I apply. Anyway, this is a beautiful, beautiful color and really nice formula. So I'm thoroughly impressed with this. The next blush that I got is from NARS. Now this is the orgasm shade and this is in their afterglow liquid blush. So this is their liquid formula. And again, I tend to prefer um, powder products just because I'm used to applying them like on top after I've powdered. So sometimes when I'm using a cream, I'll forget and I'll try to apply it after I've powdered. And anyway, so I just kind of like just powder, just keeps things more simple, but I wanted to try this because it just looked really beautiful. Um, the color on the models on the Sephora website looked absolutely stunning. I did used to have the, uh, the orgasm shade in the powder and I didn't keep it for some reason. When I did a makeup declutter, it just didn't stay. I don't know, but for some reason, this cream formula I find 
absolutely stunning. Really easy to work with. I'll show you what it looks like here. So it has a really nice like doe fit applicator and it looks like it's gonna be really, really pigmented. Um, right on the doe foot. You only need, like I only use literally one, maybe two dots of this, not very much at all. A little bit goes a really long way. And I just kind of blend it out with a sponge. I just kind of like dot it and tap it all over the cheek. And then I kind of go over it with like, if it's kind of patchy in some places, I'll kind of touch up around with just a touch of like foundation or concealer and make it look like the blush is kind of like peeking out from within. So it's not like sitting right on top of the face. And then of course, once I use my finishing powder, it just like perfects everything, especially with the hourglass. So I find that with this, I can get a really beautiful like lit from within glow. And I really love the color. I think that orgasm is probably one of the most neutral pinks. I feel like orgasm works good on everybody's skin tone. It's just a really stunning, slightly corally, shimmery, um, like mid-tone pink. It's fairly bright. I really like this one. Didn't know if I was going to keep it at first, but I've used it a couple times and it seems like every time I use it, I get a really good result in the end. So yeah, I like it. And the last blush I want to share with you guys, this honestly, like I'm telling you guys, I am in love with Dior. This is a blush that I was dying to try, really did not think I was going to like. So this is the Dior Rosy Glow Blush in the shade 001 Pink. So that bright bubblegum Barbie pink, a uh, very cool toned pink, very light. Looks like if you put it on, you're going to look like a pack of bubblegum or something. And yeah, just super scary for me, like super scary. Didn't think I was going to like it, but I saw so many people raving about this. And actually, who is it that I've been watching recently? Makeup by, makeup by Nikki LaRose, I think is her channel. And she was the one who actually like tipped me over kind of the edge. And I was like, okay, sure. Okay, sure. I'll get it because I really like her makeup reviews and she has quite a warm complexion. And I thought if she can pull this off, then I think anybody can pull this off because like I said, it's quite a cool pink blush. Again, the packaging is beautiful, but to look at this color, you guys, like this is not a color I would ever in a hundred years think to try for myself or think would work for me. But I also looked at a lot of the um, Sephora reviews and people who were wearing this and it just literally looks good on every single skin tone. It doesn't matter, you know, how fair or deep you are. It doesn't matter how warm or cool you are. This just seems to flatter every skin tone. Okay. So where do I begin with this? First of all, the shade is actually very flattering. In fact, it's probably probably the most flattering blush I have. Out of all the blushes I have, out of all the colors, this is probably the most flattering color. Formula, extremely easy to work with, very buildable. You can, again, you can't apply too much of this. Similar to the bronzer, you're not going to apply too much. Even if you're a newbie like me and you don't know what you're doing, even if you're using the wrong brush, you can't apply too much. It goes on very, very subtle and very kind of like a wash, just a really pretty, like cool, light pink wash on your cheek. And if you want to build it up, you can build it up. It's probably the easiest blush product I have when it comes to powders. I don't like something that's super, super pigmented because I find it too easy for me to go overboard. I want something easy to use where less is, less is more, but I also can't really screw it up. <laughs> and this is a blush that for some reason looks good on everyone. And I don't think you can screw it up. So again, if you've been tempted, the hype is real. And this is coming from somebody who doesn't really want to spend $65 on a blush. Definitely my probably, yeah, this is my favorite blush in my entire collection now. So that is the Dior Rosy Glow blush in the shade 001 pink. So here's another Dior product. This is one I actually just got a couple days ago at my local Shoppers Drug Mart. I didn't even know that Shoppers Drug Mart carried Dior products, but I went to a boutique shoppers and they actually had everything. You guys, they had Too Faced, they had Shiseido, they had Estee Lauder, they had Smashbox. Um, yeah, what else? They had a lot of really great brands. They didn't have the whole line of Dior makeup, but they did have this super cute little hand lotion. And I actually needed a new hand lotion for my bag. And I just was suckered in by the super cute packaging. So yeah, and this is actually quite a nice lotion. You know how sometimes you get like a high-end designer lotion and you're pretty much paying for the packaging and the brand here. I really think you also get like a nice cream. This is a really nice hand cream. The packaging is just way too cute. I couldn't resist. I had a gift card to shoppers and I had a whole bunch of points. So I just, I just got it. <laughs> 
All right, couple of mascara products. So this obviously isn't a full-sized mascara. This was just sent to me as like a, a sample with a Chanel purchase. And this is the Noir Allure Mascara in the color 10 Noir. This is actually super nice. I really like this mascara. Um, I did try it today for the first time and I certainly don't need any more mascara. Um, but this is a beautiful, beautiful brush beautiful formula. I absolutely love the way this looks on the eyelashes. It really kind of grabs and separates all of your lashes. I feel like it also curls them. I don't know if this is supposed to be a curling mascara, but I feel like it also really curls my lashes out and it kind of makes the lashes look tapered. So the base is a little thicker and then the ends are very like uh, skinny and pointy. It's quite flattering. So I like this mascara. I was tempted to buy a full size, but I'm not going to because like I said, I just don't need any more mascara right now, but it's definitely a contender for a future mascara. And also it's a great travel size. So if I go on vacation anytime soon, I can kind of pop this in my bag and take it with me. And this is the full size mascara that I also purchased. This is the Tartlet Tubing Mascara from Tarte. So this was actually a recommendation on Instagram. I was sharing with you guys how I tried the Essence Mascara, which is a super cheap, affordable drugstore, like $5.99 Canadian mascara. I love it by the way. I love the Essence Mascara. It's actually really good. But somebody saw my post and they wrote me and they said, that one's good, but they said it's not as good as the Tartlet Tubing Mascara. And I love me a good tubing mascara. I have the Thrive Tubing Mascara and I really enjoy it. It kind of gives you that like va va voom look and it's very easy to wash off. I love that tubing mascaras kind of come off in a, in a whole piece. They're, they're like super easy to wash off. So I had to try this because she spoke so highly of it. And I have to say, I really, really like this mascara. So in comparison to the Thrive, I will say that the formula is a little bit easier to work with. You're less likely to get like spider lashes with this. You're less likely to get thick, clumpy lashes than you are with the Thrive. I still really like the Thrive, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna keep and use both of them. But what I will say about this one is it is just a touch harder to wash off. I notice I do have to go in a little bit longer with my face wash or with my makeup remover to remove tubing mascara. That is one thing about tubing mascaras. They come off really well with water. They don't come off so well with like oils um, or like oil cleanse. Oil, I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but oil cleansers do a really good job at removing like most mascaras, but not tubing. The tubing, you kind of just have to like soak your eyes in water for a while and eventually they kind of just come off in like a whole piece. But anyways, this mascara I'm thoroughly impressed with. Let me show you what the wand looks like. So very similar wand to the Thrive mascara. I don't want it to dry out here, but yeah, it again, it kind of just like really what I love about tubing mascaras is they really make your lashes look way longer than they are. And it seems like every coat you put on, your lashes just look thicker and longer. The next thing I got is the MAC Paint Pot in the shade or in the color Painterly. So this is a super, super popular product. I'm sure you guys have been either using it or heard of it. And what I wanted this for is because I wanted a great eyeshadow primer, but I wanted a primer that was kind of like a bare, nice, neutral color because I find that a lot of primers, I don't like the way that they make my eyelids look like the color. And what I like about this one, this Painterly, is that, again, I'm not an expert, but even if you just put this on without eyeshadow, even this color is pretty. Like, this is good just as a cream shadow. Like, the base is so pretty. I really like how it kind of, like, covers up any imperfections on the eyelid. If you have any, like, blood vessels or discoloration or darkness or anything like that, this kind of, like, just perfects it, makes it look really pretty. It's a beautiful kind of a neutral, like, pinky nude shade, and I love that. I actually used to use, um, I used to use a cream eyeshadow that was from like Revlon or something. It came in a little pack of four creams. It was my favorite eyeshadow on the planet and they discontinued it. You cannot find it, but that was my go-to. It was like a pink cream shadow similar to this color. So I kind of just wanted to try this and it also went on sale, I think briefly on the Sephora website. So I snagged it. All right, couple of concealers. So this is actually a backup of my Gucci concealer. So if you guys have been watching my channel, you know that um, finding a shade match for me has been like an ongoing issue. And 
I think it's because for a long time I thought I was a warm undertone and I would just go into Sephora and I would tell them, hey, I'm a warm undertone. Can you help me find a product? And we would swatch them on the back of my hand or whatever and I would walk away with a warm undertone foundation and it would never ever work. And finally, after doing a color analysis and through a lot of trial and error, I discovered I'm actually like neutral slash a little cool. I'm neutral leaning cool. So anyway, the reason I fell in love with this um, concealer is because I actually got shade matched down in the US at a Sephora and this was pretty close to the shade match that she found for me and this is in the color 12C Fair and I think this is also a new product I think the Gucci concealer is new I'm not 100% sure on that but it gets great reviews like obviously I have a good taste no I'm just kidding <laughs> obviously I'm not the only person who fell in love with this because this was like a love at first try for me so this has like pretty good coverage. It's also a really easy formula to work with. It's a silky, smooth, creamy, almost a serum-y kind of a texture to it, but it has great coverage. It's easy to work with. It doesn't ever look cakey. Um, I'll show you what it looks like here. Love the packaging. The packaging is so pretty. And it's got like a nice little, nice little doe fit applicator. Um, it's just my favorite. Oh, this is the first time I actually opened this one. Yeah, because I already have one of these on the go. This is a backup. I wasn't going to open this one. Um, but yeah, it's just so far, it has been one of my favorite concealers I've ever tried. And because the shade match was so good, I just thought I'm going to order a backup because I don't want them to run out. I don't want them to discontinue it. I don't want to not be able to find it again. Because yeah, for me, finding that perfect shade match in a concealer is really hard. And I just fell in love with this one. So that is the Gucci Concentré de Pute, um, long wear, multi-use long wear concealer in the shade 12 Seafair. By the way, I will swatch all of my complexion products so you guys can see what they look like. The next concealer that I got is one from Makeup by Mario, and this is in the color 120. Um, so this is one of their lighter colors, but not the lightest shade that they had. I actually haven't had a lot of experience with this one yet, you guys, so I'll have to come back and tell you how I like it. Um, but I did try a few concealers, and most of them ended up being great and working for me. I also tried a couple from Tower 28, because a lot of people spoke really highly of Tower 28. Actually, my issue with Tower 28... Um, is that I couldn't find a proper shade for myself. None of the shades that I tried were. This is a pretty good shade match. It is a little bit on the slightly warmer side, but it works for me. And it was kind of an instant love at first application. It's been a while since I've put this on. I haven't used it with like a full face of makeup yet, but I really, really like this at first, at first try. The next concealer is from Makeup Forever, the HD Skin. Now, I also tried a foundation from Makeup Forever, but again, I had kind of a hard time finding a good shade match. I might have to revisit because people love the HD Skin um, foundation. A lot of people swear by it. And I really did like the coverage and I really liked the formula of the um, foundation, but one shade was too dark and one shade was too light. And for that price for a foundation, and especially considering I don't need like tons of makeup products, at least the shade match has to be really good. So I did not end up keeping the HD skin. It was just a little bit too light for me. Um, but this concealer I really like. This is in the color 1.1N, so it is quite light. This one, oh, I don't think I showed you the Makeup by Mario Doe Fit, but anyway, um, this one is quite light, but it really works for me, and I don't mind having a concealer that's just a little light because it's good for brightening. It's good for kind of reverse contouring or brightening up the under eye area, so I'm okay having a couple concealers that are just a little on the light side. And speaking of concealers that are just a little too light, but not really, we have the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer in the shade One Fair. So this is the lightest one that they had. This is something that I'm learning through trial and error is that usually when I order a complexion product, I always end up thinking I'm going to be darker than I am. I always end up ordering one shade too dark. So I've kind of learned my lesson. So when it comes to concealers and foundations, I kind of look at what I think I might be and usually I'm one up. I'm one lighter than that. So anyway, I ordered this one and it was a perfect, like love at first try. It's a pretty full coverage concealer. It says it's radiant. I don't really know if it's radiant. It kind of like is pretty, I don't know. It's kind of like more mattifying on me. I didn't find it to have like a radiant finish, but what do I know? I'm not a beauty expert. Um, but anyways, I really like this formula. 
I have used this a couple of times with different makeup looks and I seem to just really like the end result every single time I use it. Um, I can use this one to spot conceal it. One thing about this concealer is it does oxidize just a touch. So at first when I put it on, it looks like it's going to be too light, but after a few minutes, it does darken up just a little bit and then it's kind of like a perfect shade match. And I don't know what it is. I just, I always get a really nice um, result in the end when I use this concealer. So this one was also kind of a love at first try for me, which I was really surprised by. Speaking of Charlotte Tilbury, this is another complexion product. This is obviously the Hollywood Flawless Filter. Extremely, extremely popular product. I was dying to try it. This is in the shade 1 Fair, so their lightest shade. You guys, I tried the e.l.f. Halo Glow in two different colors. <laughs> so with e.l.f. Halo, in your local drugstore, like in our local drugstore, they do not have a light enough shade for me. I had to go to the e.l.f. website and even then ordering one of their very fairest shades, it still was too orange slash yellow on me. Could not find a light enough um, shade. I'm sure it would have been a beautiful product. But anyway, so I ended up going with the Hollywood Flawless Filter. And I still don't really know how I totally feel about this yet. I haven't used it as a full all over my face application underneath foundation. This product, you can mix it in with your foundation to give a more radiant glow. You can put it all over as a primer to have, again, like a lip from within glow. You can use it just on top of your makeup once you're done for um, a highlighted look on just the cheeks. So there's multiple different uses for this product and I have not tried it out enough to really know my formed opinion. All I have used it for so far is just as like a highlight after I was done my makeup. And for that, I will say it was okay. I will say that I noticed that if I did put it anywhere where I had any pores, it did enhance my pores. And the funny thing about makeup, you guys, is that once your skin gets into really good shape with like the skincare products you're using, your skin actually looks better without makeup. Like my skin most days looks better without makeup. <laughs> And then some days I will get a perfectly flawless makeup look and I think, damn, I really look good with a lot of makeup on, <laughs> but it has to be the right products. Anyways, so I didn't even know I had pores until I put this on. Like I cannot see my pores until I put this on. So that is one thing I will say. Um, so I still don't know my total formed opinion about this product. I think I'll probably like it. I just have to use it a little bit more and I really want to put it on like a full face kind of thing and just see what the result is and see what I think about it. And I also want to try mixing it in with different foundation. Okay, here's a product that is not from Sephora. I actually got this a couple days ago when I was at that boutique Sephora that had Shiseido and Estee Lauder and all of these other products. Again, I had a gift card. I had some points. I wanted to spend a little bit. Um, so this is a product from Shiseido, you guys. Aside from the perfume Shiseido Zen, I have never tried any Shiseido products. And I will say it is a rabbit hole that I could go very, very far down. These products, you guys, everything I tried from Shiseido that day, uh, skin tints, foundations, um, the girl let me try like toners, lotions, face washes, everything she showed me, I fell in love with. I didn't buy everything because I certainly don't need like a whole bunch of high-end expensive skincare. I have enough skincare, but man, like if I in the future ever run out of face wash, I think I might want to try. And I, I know that I don't need to spend 60 or $70 on a, on a face wash. I know that, but you guys, have you ever tried Shiseido? Like their products are so unbelievably stunning. So this is one product I did get. And this is the I don't want to drop it and break it. This is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Invisible Silk Pressed Powder in the color Translucent Matte. All right, so this is what it looks like. I have used it. I really enjoy it. Comes with a little, a little puff, which actually I did use, and actually this little puff is nice. This powder, you guys, <laughs> Um, second to the hourglass. This is probably the nicest finishing powder I've ever used. Absolutely beautiful, super finely milled. I like it better than the Charlotte Tilbury pressed powder. Charlotte Tilbury, as you guys probably know, is very finely milled, very soft. It kind of just melts into your skin and makes everything look perfect. This does it even more. Like, in my humble opinion, as a consumer, as a non-expert, I think this is better than the Charlotte Tilbury. This is also 
kind of affordable. It was like $42, $45. Absolutely stunning product. The only thing I will say is I don't love the packaging. I was thinking when I bought it that it would be just like this part, like just the square. And it's actually quite substantial packaging. So I don't like that they have like this section. And that's one thing I noticed with a lot of Shiseido products is a lot of their makeup products do come with a little spot for the the thing to go. And to me, I don't really need that because I kind of have my own like application products. I have my own brushes. It is nice for if you're just on the go, it might be a nice product to keep in your purse or something. But that's one thing that I would say, I don't like the packaging of a lot of the Shiseido items. They're just not my favorite in terms of packaging, a little bit bulky, take up a lot of room in the makeup bag, but the product itself is absolutely incredible. It is so nice. Couple of sunscreen and skincare products that I want to share with you guys, and then we'll go into my foundations. I did find a few foundations that I'm in love with and are probably the, some of the best shade matches and the best formulas I've ever found in foundations. So that's coming up next. So first, this sunscreen. This is the daily go-to sunscreen, broad spectrum SPF 50 PA4 pluses from Purito. This, I think, I want to say this is a hybrid sunscreen. I or maybe it's just a chemical. I'm not 100% sure. I got this because, as I said in one of my last videos, I was looking for sunscreens that were cosmetically elegant and would work well under makeup. What my One of my biggest pet peeves, you guys, is when beauty channels show you a full face of makeup and it's flawless, but they did not apply sunscreen. So I'm thinking, okay, your face is perfect, but to be perfectly frank, like anyone can get a flawless base if you're just putting on makeup and primer. What about the sunscreen? Like I wear sunscreen every single day and I don't just put makeup on at night. Sometimes I put it on in the daytime too. So anyway, I was looking up um, cosmetically elegant sunscreens that were recommended. This was recommended from uh, Dr. Shireen Idris. Um, and she also is kind of like me where a sunscreen cannot migrate and go into your eyes and cause a lot of burn burning and stinging and discomfort. So if she okayed this, I thought this would be good for me. I have not tried it on my face. I have only tried it on my skin and it is lovely on the back of the hand. So this is brand new. I will come back and update you guys if I like this or not. So this is the Dermatology Broad Spectrum SPF 45. This one, you guys, this one came highly recommended from everywhere. Like, I don't think you can stumble upon a skincare channel, an anti-aging skincare channel, a, like a lot of the beauty channels. This is one of the most recommended, like highest rated sunscreens that was out there. I've been dying to try this. It's kind of been on my list for a long time. I did try the tinted version quite a few months ago. It did not work for me. You guys might recall that video. The tinted version of this is way too dark for me. I have a really hard time finding sunscreens, tinted sunscreens that are not too dark, even though I would love the iron oxide protection for hyperpigmentation. Um, it's a, it's a deal breaker for me if I'm going to look like an Oompa Loompa. I wanted to try this one, which was SPF 45, just their regular non-tinted. This is probably the nicest sunscreen I have ever put on my face to date. Probably the nicest. So first of all, this is a hybrid. It has, I believe, zinc. Yeah, zinc oxide and also octanoxate. So it has a chemical sunscreen filter as well as a mineral sunscreen filter. Typically, as you guys know, I prefer an all mineral sunscreen just because I don't want to have to worry about it burning. I don't want to have to worry about it migrating into my eyes and stinging my eyes. I have very sensitive eyes and it's important to me that they don't burn all day because I wear sunscreen every single day and I wear lots of it. Um, so usually I don't like a hybrid or a chemical, but I was willing to make an exception and try this because so many people hyped it up. And okay, so it doesn't burn around the eyes. It doesn't migrate. You know how some sunscreens will, over the course of the day, start to slowly move and like end up somehow in the corners of your eyes? Especially if you use a lot of other hydrating ingredients underneath it, like moisturizers and serums. Sometimes a sunscreen can kind of just move into your eye area and burn. This doesn't do that. It kind of stays in place. I've been wearing this all day today. This is actually my first day trying it. And I love it. I have had no irritation. The chemical filter that's in here does not burn my skin. I have dry, sensitive skin that is currently acclimating to tretinoin. So my skin currently has a tendency to be a little bit on the sensitive side. This does not burn or cause any kind of irritation. It is cosmetically elegant. It has a beautiful finish. No cast. It dries down to this beautiful, slightly radiant, slightly glowy, kind of dewy finish, but it's not sticky. It's not sticky. It's not wet. 
it's not something that I think you would have to worry about your hair getting stuck to it or anything like that. It's just a beautiful, glowy, like glass skin finish. Works beautifully under makeup. I did end up putting on some foundation over top of it later in the day, and it just went on beautifully. It wasn't becoming patchy. It wasn't slipping and sliding around. It wasn't moving around the face. Um, very, very good for under makeup. I can totally see why people like this. It's good on its own. It's good under makeup. It feels nice. It looks nice. And the texture, like the cream texture itself, putting this on the skin feels like you're putting on an expensive skincare product. This actually does have glycerin in it. It's hydrating. It's nourishing. It has humectants in it. Um, I don't know. It just is beautiful. It makes the skin look beautiful. It makes you look like you have glowing glass skin. This is definitely the nicest sunscreen I've ever used. I still think my copper tone for face is one of my faves. Um, I'm not going to give up my copper tone. I like my all mineral SPF 50 for face, especially on days that my skin's irritated, especially on days when I'm just bumming around the house doing laundry, not wearing makeup. I just want like good sunscreen protection. So, but this is definitely up there. So I did get a backup of this because it was on sale and I had a feeling I was going to love it. So I did actually order a second bottle of this. So this is my unopened unopened backup. You can see the cellophane is still on there. So I've got one open bottle on the go and a backup, which I'm so happy that I got it because I got it at a great discount for Black Friday. And the next item that I got from Dermatology, and I did also get a backup of this because again, I had a feeling I was going to love it. This is again, one of the most highest, the most highest, one of the highest rated Dermatology products on the market. Everyone from dermatologists to consumers, to beauty channels, to everybody seems to love and recommend this. this this is the Dermatology Needleless Serum. So this is a peptide serum essentially, but it also has ceramides and it also has niacinamide, I believe, in here as well, yes. Um, so this is just a really nice peptide serum. As you guys know, I was using the Timeless Coenzyme Q10, which also has peptides in it. It has Matrixyl 3000, I think, in it, something like that. I'm almost out of my Timeless Coenzyme Q10 and I really, really wanted to try the Needleless Serum. I just keep hearing such good things about it. So many people have this as like their constant holy grail, they will never stop using it kind of thing. I know Abby Young uses it. I know the channel Dr. Lee gave it two thumbs up. Peptides are something I wanna incorporate into my skincare a lot because peptides basically stimulate, stimulate your skin to produce collagen. I also like the idea of a little bit of niacinamide in here, although I do get niacinamide from other products as well, but niacinamide is great for so many things, including redness. Redness is an issue for me, but I am still using my Timeless Coenzyme Q10. I have like one day left of that, maybe two. Then I can dig into this and I'm super excited. And the last dermatology product that I got is their Peptide Night Cream. So this is a cream that a lot of people really like as well. I try to stick to the old adage of if it's not broken, don't fix it. I also try not to add and put too many new things into my skincare routine. So I am aware that it's not good to constantly try new things. However, life is also short and I love skincare and I love trying new things. I, I can't deny it. I love trying new skincare. I just do. It is what I consider to be a moderately healthy obsession that is still cheaper than perfume <laughs> in a sense. Um, so this is a peptide cream. Let's see. It has ceramides, which is wonderful. Um, what else? Allantoin, urea. A lot of people really, really like this peptide cream and I just really wanted to try it. I'm huge into trying new creams. I'm huge into peptide creams and I like things that are nourishing and moisturizing. And on one hand, I know that if it's not broken, you shouldn't fix it. But on the other hand, I feel like if you don't try new things, how do you discover even better things, right? Really excited to dig into that and try it and see what I think. Okay, you guys, time for some foundations. Now, this is going to be... This is going to be another kind of a long part of the video, so I hope you guys are okay with a long video. Um, I did end up finding some foundations that I fell in love with, which you guys has been a thing for me. Like I have learned my lesson, by the way, I will not buy drugstore foundations anymore. Not that there's anything wrong with them if you can find a shade, but for me, it has been a nightmare trying to find a drugstore foundation that has a shade match for me. And I have tried multiple, multiple, multiple brands and they always end up getting returned because they just don't work. They are always pulling too orange or I don't know what it is, but when it comes to these higher end, um, brands, I just find it so much easier to find a shade match. Let me know if I'm alone in that. I feel like I must not be, but 
Anyways, I have I was just so happy with some of these foundations, both with the way that they looked, the formulas, and also the shade match. So in no particular order, the first foundation that I found that I really, really loved, it was a love at first try, was the Laura Mercier foundation. This is called the Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Foundation, and this is in the shade 0N1 Silk. It has a, it has a pump dispenser like this. I honestly have not done a full face of makeup with this foundation yet, so I can't really tell you like my full thoughts on this foundation. Um, all I know is that when I did swatch it on my skin, it blended in really well. It was a great color match. Loved the formula. I'm pretty sure this is a medium to full coverage. It felt, it looked like it was a pretty like medium to full coverage foundation. And it was just an instant like at first try. So I have not done a lot of playing around with this, but this is one that the color match was perfect. I actually just took a guess on Sephora. I was looking at the models. I was looking at the undertones. This is one of their neutral undertones. And I kind of just compared and contrasted. And this seemed to be one of the ones that would be the best for me. And this is actually a perfect, perfect shade match. The next foundation, and again, this is another one I haven't had a chance to use as a full face of foundation yet. All I have done is like apply it to one side of my face, to a cheek, to see how it blended in, how the color was, and how I liked the formula and the dry down and the consistency. So this is the Dior Forever Skin Glow. Again, Dior is a makeup brand that I'm finding. I really love a lot of their products so far. And this is in the shade 0N. So again, neutral and one of their lightest neutral. I think this is their second lightest shade in the entire range. This is a perfect shade match for me. Um, and again, I just loved how it went on the skin. I loved the formula. It blended right in really smoothly. Um, it feels very hydrating. It feels very glowy, but not too glowy or too dewy or sticky, but it does feel like and look like it's going to be a really beautiful complexion. Again, I have not done a full face with this, but for me, the biggest thing is finding a good shade match. If I can find a good shade match and I like the formula, I'm pretty much sold. The next foundation that I really, really liked instantly is the Glossier Stretch Foundation, and this is in the shade Very Light 2. So for me, again, it was all about shade match, and this one and the Very Light 3 I could use either of them or I could mix the two together. Mixing shade two and shade three together was actually really good, but I didn't want to keep both. But luckily I was able to get away with either shade two very light or shade three very light. So this one also has a pump pump dispenser. This got really great reviews on YouTube. I watched a lot of reviews of this before I actually purchased it. It came highly recommended. Yeah, I absolutely love it. I love the finish. I think I have also used this in a full face and I'm trying to remember because I've tried so many things lately, but I just remember that I had a flawless face with this. Like my skin looked good. It looked very natural. A little bit went a long way. I didn't need very much. I think it was medium coverage, but buildable. Very nice formula, really easy to blend out, kind of just blended itself. It was just a really nice foundation, just a really easy, good one to work with. And this one is just a touch on the lighter side, the Very Light 2, but the Very Light 3 was a little warmer. So this one was the one I decided to go with. This one I think is a peach undertone. So like almost a little bit too warm for me, but it worked. All right, now we're getting into um, sort of the more serum-y, glowy, skin tint kind of things. This is actually marketed as a foundation, but for me, it feels more like a skincare product. It feels like a very heavily tinted skincare product. This is the Makeup by Mario. I think it's called the Surreal Skin Foundation. Yeah, Surreal Skin Foundation in the shade 1C. So you guys, I was not expecting to like this as much as I do. I have kind of pros and cons with this one, but the pros outweigh the cons for me. So again, this one has a pump mechanism, which is quite nice. And this, this, okay, where do I start? First of all, it has a lot of beautiful skin carrying ingredients. This has kind of a oily, um, kind of an oily smell to it. If you've ever smelled the Ilia serum, um, the serum tint from Ilia foundation, you know how it kind of has that like, oily smell to it. Not in a bad way, but it kind of smells like you're putting hydrating oils on your skin. This kind of has that too. This is very hydrating and very, very dewy and very, very glowy, almost shiny, almost greasy. But for me, not in a bad way because I have very, very dry skin and I live in a dry climate. There are no oceans around here and it can be very, very dry. So the only thing I will say about this is that 
it doesn't ever seem to totally set or dry down unless you put powder on it. All of the other skin tints that I have tried that I'm gonna share with you in today's video, they do seem to dry down to some capacity. It just doesn't, it just stays wet. It stays wet kind of like all day. But you guys, for me, if I'm having a no makeup makeup day, if I'm working, if I'm working, my hair is pulled back, it's out of my face, I don't have to worry about my hair sticking to my face. If I'm just running errands, I pull my hair back. I just like, I don't have any bangs or anything like that. I'm just like hanging out, going to get coffee, sunscreen, put a little bit of this on. It just leaves your skin like dewy, glowy, hydrated. I like this better than the Ilia Skin Serum, Super Skin Serum or whatever it's called. I'll put a picture on the screen because that's the product that I think is the most comparable to this one. I like this one a lot better than the Ilia. And the reason I like this better than the Ilia is because I find that this is less oily than the Ilia. The Ilia is still kind of too oily for me. This is just a notch less oily for me and it smells really nice and it feels really nice and it literally just feels like I'm putting a beautiful hydrating moisturizing skincare product on my face but with the added benefit of those iron oxides. Um, iron oxides if you weren't aware are really good for people with hyperpigmentation or melasma because they help block um, visible light, which can contribute to your hyperpigmentation. So people always recommend, a dermatologist always recommend, if you're going to wear a sunscreen, look for one with iron oxides if you have pigmentation issues. I do have a little bit of pigmentation issues. That's like my main skin, one of my main skin concerns. So I really like that I can wear like my normal sunscreen. Plus I can throw on the makeup by Mario and it just gives me that extra layer of protection because of the color that's in here. Um, so I just really love it. Like this is one of my favorite new complexion products. It isn't one I would wear for a night out it isn't one I would wear if I had my hair down and I was curling my hair however that being said I have put powder on this and once you put powder on it it does set but then for me it takes away from the beauty of this product like I would prefer to wear this as a quote-unquote no makeup makeup day when I just want my skin to look glowy glass like hydrated dewy reflecting like the moon okay when i want to be like glowy glazed girl this is the one that i like the next complexion product is the danessa myricks beauty yummy skin serum skin tint so this one i almost didn't try but when i was looking at people's like top skin tint recommendations this kept showing up repeatedly and this one got really good reviews and i just really wanted to try it so i did order this in the shade two luckily it is a pretty good shade match for me i probably could have gone with a shade one so the Danessa, um, the Yummy Skin, in comparison to the Makeup by Mario, this is much less oily. It does have some skin-loving ingredients as well, but it is a lot less oily than the Makeup by Mario. And unlike the Makeup by Mario, this one also sets. It doesn't require you to powder it. It does dry down and kind of set a little bit better than the Makeup by Mario. I haven't put anything else on top of it. I haven't tried powder, blush, um, the whole nine yards. I just put this on my skin and I was so happy with how it looked. I just left it. Um, so that's what I, that's one of the reviews I hear about this product a lot is that it looks so beautiful and so skin-like just by itself that people like to wear it just as a no makeup makeup look. This was an instant love at first try. Instant love at first try. The match was pretty good. I loved the consistency of the serum. I loved how it felt. The next item I got is from Chanel. This is the Le Beige Eau de Tint, Water Fresh Tint. So I have been wanting to try this for a really long time as well. Um, there's something about those little pigments suspended in, in the rest of the product that just looks, it looked so pretty and so enticing to me. And I did get this in the shade Light. This is the lightest one on the Chanel website. Um, it doesn't have a huge shade range, but something about this that's really interesting is it looks like it's going to be way too dark, but once you actually get it on your face and blend it out, it turns out to be like a perfect shade match for me. So I really like that it has a neutral undertone. Again, it looks like those little pigments in there are going to be a little dark, but yeah, once it comes out and once you spread it out, it really lightens up and looks very, very pretty. It also did come with this little applicator brush which actually you guys, I like the applicator brush. I can see why they put it with it because the applicator brush is beautiful to blend out this tint. Normally I don't keep when, when foundations or blushes or anything come with their own applicator because I just think I already have my own stuff. Like I like to use a beauty blender or I like to use my own brush. But in this case, this little applicator brush is actually perfect with the tint. 
I've applied it just with my fingers, I've applied it with another brush, and I've applied it with this one, and this is the perfect brush to apply it, which is nice because it's also small and you can like take it with you on vacation, plus it's super cute. It has like the Chanel logo. It's a really soft little, little dense little brush, and it just does a really nice job of like spreading out the, the particles. Um, so it does come with a pump like that, like so. And this is the first um, Chanel complexion product that I've ever tried. I'm actually surprised too. I thought this was going to be a lot more expensive than what it was. Um, it's really not that much more expensive than some of the higher end foundations like at Sephora. I think it was comparable to like Dior for price. So yeah, I really like this. The only thing I will say, if you have sensitive skin or if you don't like fragrance, steer clear of this because it is heavily fragranced. Um, I've noticed that with, I'm trying to smell, even the brush. The brush even smells like, I don't know, it just has like the Chanel makeup smell to it. It doesn't really smell like perfume, it just it has a, a scent to it. So, but I'm, I really like this. This has a, I would say this has a light to medium coverage and it just has a beautiful kind of a skin-like, like radiant finish. Again, kind of your skin, but better. Really, really beautiful. I had this on yesterday and again, it's one of those products that my skin just looks flawless after like it, it's a it's a flawless finish it's a good time every time you know <laughs> and on to my last two products from today's haul video these are two shiseido products and let me tell you this girl who is working at this boutique she is a good little saleswoman because she said to me she goes have you ever tried shiseido i was like no uh, aside from the perfume and like i said almost everything i tried i was sold like if i needed to get all the stuff face wash, toner, moisturizer. And if I felt justified in spending like $75 on a face toner, I, I was like sold. So anyway, great little saleswoman. So these are two Shiseido products that I fell in love with. These are two of their complexion products. The one on the right is the Shiseido Revitalescence Skin Glow Foundation. It has kind of this interesting packaging with like the dome shaped white lid. So I'll show you guys this one first. This is in the color 110 Alabaster. It is the lightest color that they have, which is a little on the light side, but it's so sheer and blends out so well that it doesn't look too light for me at all. Um, it really ends up working very nice because it's not a full coverage product. So even if it's not the perfect match, it still works, you know? It doesn't really oxidize a whole lot, I will say, but the next shade darker, which was one something or other ivory, the next shade darker was just a little bit on the yellow side for me, a little bit too warm for me. So I really like this one because it was more neutral. This has a pump like this. I will show you what it looks like um, after. I absolutely fell in love with this product. This is a beautiful kind of a, almost like a serum-y skin tint foundation. Very, very light coverage. Still has okay coverage. Blends out really nicely. Very luminous, very dewy. Um, it feels like an expensive skincare product. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the Makeup by Mario or the Ilia kind of products, but this is not oily it sets. It's not overly dewy. I don't know. It's just so beautiful. You guys will see when I swatch it. I just like, I fell in love with this from the moment I put it on the back of my hand. I was like, yep, I need that in my life. Just feeling the consistency and the formula. I knew I would love it, especially as somebody with dry skin who likes a little bit more of a radiant glowy finish. And like I say, if you don't like that radiant glowy finish, you can always throw a little powder on, you know what I mean? But some days I just want that glow and this is truly just the most beautiful glow. Um, so I really, really like this. This is going to be another one of those amazing no makeup makeup day things. This shade is a little bit lighter than the Danessa Myricks. This is the 110 Alabaster. It's also just a touch lighter than the Makeup by Mario. So definitely a little bit on the lighter side, almost too light for me, but not really, it works. And the last product is another Shiseido foundation. And this is the Synchro Skin Self-Refreshing Foundation. It says it's oil free. This is also in the shade 110 Alabaster. Now this one is a little bit uh, more full coverage. It's a medium coverage, but you can build it up if you want. But because it is a little bit higher coverage than the last one, this one is a little bit light for me, but this one does oxidize a touch. And I actually tested it out on my arm to see how much it oxidized. It doesn't oxidize a lot, but it oxidizes just enough that 
if it goes on too light, it doesn't dry down too light. It dries down pretty much perfectly. And this was the other um, base product from Shiseido that I just fell in love with. I also tried their more full coverage one, but like I told you guys, I'm not huge into really full coverage. I prefer something that's light to medium and buildable. So this claims that it is, it says it's active force technology synchronizes with skin and resists heat, humidity, and motion for a fresh natural finish that lasts all day, 24 hour wear, hour wear, flawless, weightless comfort, medium buildable coverage. So this one here has a really interesting cap on it. So you twist it to unlock it and then you can pump it out and then you twist it back to lock it. So I, yeah, I really love this product. You guys absolutely beautiful provides a flawless finish. Like I said, this color is just a little light for me, but the one darker than this was a little more on the warm side. I don't think it would have worked as well. And this one does oxidize just a touch. So if you're looking at the Shiseidos, my recommendation would be to go one shade higher than what you would usually use and warm up with bronzer if you have to, because it will oxidize just a little bit. But like the last one also has a bit of a radiance to it, but not as radiant or glowy as the first one. So this one I would wear if I wanted more of a full coverage, less dewy, less glowy, but still very hydrated skin-like look. I don't know if you guys can see here as well, but the Makeup by Mario, which is this one here, has not set down. <laughs> it's still oily and also the Chanel, um, although I didn't blend that one in very good because it's better with the little brush. But yeah, the Makeup by Mario just never, never sets. It kind of stays like that, which I don't mind. And then also um, this one here is the Shiseido. So you can see those two are the glowiest, dewiest. The Danessa Myricks is that one. And that one does, does dry down quite nicely. But hopefully you guys can see that shade comparison and it actually looks like quite a broad shade range but it's funny because all of them work on me um it's just like yeah sometimes i just have to like use a little bit more bronzer with the the lighter ones but but yeah oddly enough they all work for me so so that was it for today's video you guys i know it was really long if you're here till the very end thank you for being here till the end i really appreciate you and um, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I did try to keep it as short as possible given how many items were in it, which is kind of a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys all very soon in my next one. Bye for now.